What should we make, Joe? Should we make some soap dishes, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> Any sort of dish. Yeah. This is kind of developing on from what we did last time in yeah. making a flat tile. Yeah. And this is making it slightly raised up, yeah. dished like. So these are more kind of dished. What you can put things in. Here is one that which we've been using. I've been using, sorry, as a soap dish. So that has soap in it. It looks um, like soap, it looks like the soap's actually the shape of the 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 dish, Tom. Yeah. Well, they start off. The soap sits on the spikes at the top, which yeah. is quite nice. And then, because it, when it sits in, and then it kind of just slowly sinks into it. Nice. The, the hole in, hole in the bottom means that it doesn't fill up with like soap soup, soap and become on my always stays dry. Soap soup. Yeah. So more examples, more round ones. You got any examples there, Joe? Yeah. So I've this got one's quite wild. Some triangular ones and some square ones that I did. So this this one was an early soap dish, which has a hole in it, like you're talking, not glazed, and quite quite dramatic, kind of like a uh, fire sort of like ridge to it. And then these are these triangular ones that I've been doing. And in this, I've, I've on this one, I've blobbed a little bit of uh, a ball of clay in quite tidily just to seal it, so you could put all manner of pickles and hummus and snacks in there. What I really like is when you put the ball through. I, like, I quite like that little detail on the bottom then. It's quite nice. Yeah, we can go into that, can't we, later? We'll show people how to do that. There might be a few ways we can think of doing that. Yeah. Because there's other, the other way of like squashing everything together so the hole in the bottom disappears. Nice. And such yeah. Like. yeah. So everyone will have their kits, won't they? Yeah, they should do. Or if they haven't got their kits, as we've been saying to everyone, all you need is a screw and a piece of wire. So for this one, I'm not going to use the kit. I'll just use a screw and a piece of wire. I just got an old bit of wood. I've been looking for like interesting. I thought maybe we could also do it on like cardboard, Joe. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. If you've got some really tough cardboard and kind of laminated a few bits up, so it's that sort yeah. of thick, you could just use cardboard, couldn't you? Yeah, you could definitely. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that'd be really nice. But cardboard would be really good, Tom, because actually um, the more porous the material is, the better, because the clay will always come away. So cardboard yeah. is really porous. Yeah, so I'd be thinking of other things we, you could use without, you know, drilling into your mum's best tabletop. So I've just got a, a plank of wood that I found, so I'm going to use that. But you could, there's lots of other things. The side of a drawer is quite a good way of doing this. So you could pull a drawer out and use the side of it. I've just got a sheet of plywood, Tom, that I found in the alley out the back. So you could use the side of a drawer, use it, put it back in the drawer, and no one would even know. So it, I've got this, which is really hard. Joe's will be slightly softer because it's plywood. So I'm going to use a pilot hole, so a really small drill first to drill into it. Put my screw in. I looked for the, the worst screwdriver I could find, Joe. Oh, nice. Why is that? Just trying to make things out of the worst materials possible. I've got, yeah, mine is pretty much, uh, mine's pretty kind of like bog standard as well. Yeah. Stanley. Stanley. So again, like about a centimetre up, do you think? Yeah, I think it's sensible. It doesn't have to be as much, does it, with a dish, because you are coming at a more of an angle. So. Yeah, so even if you go down low, it pulls it up, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to go, I'll go and see what happens. It's about six millimetres up to the top of the screw. That one. Quarter of an inch old money. So, small loop over the screw, and we've got the other loop there. Um, I haven't got a pencil. Pencil is a good thing to use, so I'm just going to use a bigger screw to hold. It like so. I can move the whole board around if need be, keep that hand still, or move all the way around. So that's done. What we've been telling to everyone for, to use for this um, project to start you off if you're buying clay. So, this we recommend is clay. 
Well, and I've got this is the same. Well, we're in different counties and we've got exactly the same bag of clay. Stoneware. This is buff stoneware. Fancy. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. If this one. If you, if often you, they say, sorry, Joe. Often they say um, school buff. This one says college buff. Absolutely no idea why. It's exactly the same. This one's stuff. just slightly more intelligent. It's, yeah, yeah, maybe it's more advanced. Slightly more learned. If anybody really doesn't, can't get hold of any, we are more than happy to help them locate some clay. And if you can't get any, we'll send you some down. Happy yeah. to. So just a manageable lump I'm taking off. Don't really know what I'm going to make yet, so I'm just taking a bit off that I can manage. I've got, I've got a nice lump here, probably similar to yours, Tom, and it's quite rough shaped at the moment. So I'm just going to start patting it, hitting it into a into a ball first. What shape are you doing, Joe? Because I'm going to go do square. I think we'll go triangle. Right. So again, we're using the techniques we showed you last time, just to kind of rough out a square shape, keep turning it on a wooden surface. You'll see the marks left on the wooden surface. Let's move that down a bit. By the clay, that's the moisture coming out. Again, you don't have to be too precious or accurate. Once you master all the techniques, you can start adapting to it, and spending a bit more time. This is just to get a feel of the whole process. Dropping it really good. Use the flat surface that you've got in front of you to get your flat faces. So yeah. drop it against the flat surfaces. You can really drop it. And what that'll do, it'll flatten surfaces off nicely. Okay, I'm happy with that. Put mine there. And why did you say you, you've gone, Tom, with your, with your shape? How tall or how wide? How wide would you say your square shape is? 10 centimetres by 8 no, centimetres. No, no, it doesn't matter too much, but I'm just uh, interested. So yeah. it wasn't quite square. Yeah. Like, I like a bit square. Tom, something I like to do with the triangle is that I like to... I like to have it on one face, but I don't. I don't like that being sharp necessarily. So I like to roll it over like that. Oh, that's quite cool. What I quite like it's, is you get, you get a little radius on the on the corner then, which is quite nice. Yeah, like a trivial pursuits cheese. Exactly like that, Tom. All right. So yeah, happy with my form. Okay. So we bring the wire in there, right? Yeah. So with this lump, we're going to make quite a few dishes. This was from a round one. So basically you make one and then you take that off and you make another and another and another. So we should get four or five out of that. So again, I'm going to go central. But again, using my eyes, just going to judge the center. You kind of I look down onto the screw from above and then keep my eyes on that screw and then move the clay into my vision and like put it down where the screw is, kind of looking through the clay. Like so. I've used it. And then wire right out to the side. I've, I've put a little mark in the clay, which to me looks central. And then I'm going to guide it over the screw. That's just another way of doing it. And then I'm going to check visually over the top as well, like Tom's method. Okay. 
So as I say, you can use a pencil or a screw or anything that you find easy to hold. And I, well, the technique I, I use is I hold it like so, but I also use my finger on it just to give it a bit more, what's the word? Um, precision. Precision and sensitivity as to what's yeah. going on. Okay, so where do we start with this? We know that the, the screw in the center is kind of six millimeters up. And the, for the tile we went, we took the wire up to six, six millimeters. But for this, we're gonna go a little bit higher, kind of double. And you'll see the wire coming up at an angle and that's going through the clay into the middle of the clay. And then we're just gonna take that round, keeping it roughly that angle, wiggle it a bit. Not gonna to wiggle too much for this one. And then back to that cent that point we started off at and then pull it down through the old line we cut. And that's done. I missed the line slightly, sorry. <laughs> then put that back down to the side. And I suppose, Joe, do you think if you left that, it will fuse back together? Yeah. Best to take it off quite quickly. Yeah, it definitely would. So, and, and even if you, when you're going around with the wire, be careful, you want to put a little bit of pressure down on the top of the thing, but don't put too much down because as you cut, you're right, it will fuse back together. And yeah, you, you're also right, Tom, that if you leave it too long, it will fuse back together. So as soon as you get yeah. the around, peel it off. So that's your first dish. I've made an this one right. Tom. That, um, sorry. Oh, sorry, Tom. No, go on. I've made an observation. That I think it, uh, you know, we always recommend on the square that you don't go in at the corner. I think on the triangle, if you're doing a triangle, I think it benefits from the going in at the corner. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what the, the maths is, but it, it, feels, it feels better on a triangle if you do go in at the corner, but on the square, yeah. maybe don't. But I mean, it's up to you. Yeah. So obviously, I, I was doing my wire out that much. If you go a, quite a bit higher, you get a steeper angle to your dish and your dish will be more dished. Which is what, what I Like got. Joe's. Yeah. Yeah, so I've not got much of a dish there. Anyway, this is the first one. The bottom of it always looks a little bit ugly, but it's still fine. So we do that thing again, hold it, rest it on your palm and then use your little finger just to push one side of it up and then get some of the slip, which you also learn how to make up last week and we just blob a bit of that on again you don't have to be too precious and then squeeze those two bits back together gently just using the edge whoops okay and that's done i can kind of you can like go across the back as well we have done them where we don't use slip and you just squeeze them back together which works sometimes sometimes it doesn't it all, it all depends on how wet the clay is i guess doesn't it tom yeah Mark, so i'm just going to put that to one side on a wooden board again so it doesn't stick don't put it on like a laminate surface or anything shiny and synthetic or stone wood or cardboard or cloth good a bit of paper is quite nice as well actually yeah, anything porous that will draw out the moisture. So we're going to do another one now, but I'm just going to quickly clean the wire. Otherwise, the bits of clay that are stuck to the wire will kind of drag through the clay. And it won't be as clean. And then we look at it again. So that was quite central. So I'm just going to put it back. Where it, well, if it's not quite central, you can adapt it and move it slightly to one side or to the other side. So I'll just go right down. Look at the screw roll, flop it back on. Oh. If you take your fingers off, it kind of, it'll wobble slightly. What you want to do is, is squash it a little bit. Like so. So it's still, the, the edges are still away from the baseboard, but it's kind of stable. Tom, some, something I do if, if you know, if, um, if your mark isn't central, Something that I often do, I often have I often have some flat sticks knocking around like this. 
and what I quite like to do if, if, the, if the thing isn't central is just kind of almost like pat it a little bit so then you get what you get is a flat face and it gives you the invitation then to recenter it in a in a, okay. uh, in, a, in, a in a sympathetic way okay so I'm just going to go again for this one I'm going to go up slightly higher than I did before because I want more of a dish like shape once you've done a few you'll get the hang of it and you'll be able to go through a whole block and get everything out coming exactly the same ish so again can I use a bit more of a wiggle and of course if you get around to the side it all comes a bit difficult so you can just move the board or whatever you're working on around to a more manageable place uh, down around And then back to that critical point where you just have to go into the top of that line where we came in and back down. Quite, quite often, Tom, I find, you know, when you get back to the line, it, especially if the clay is quite soft, I don't know if you can see, but it, it often, um, the, the, the first bit is kind of like sunk down a bit anyway, and it, it, re it really yeah. reveals it, which is fine. Yeah, so mine, mine has come off there and it's all gone, it's gone flop back down again. I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm just going to get it off the board using mostly the outside, make sure it's all loose using the outside edges. Because we'll show you a technique Joe has of dealing with the edges and smartening them up or making them look interesting later in the process. And I've just gently rested the underside on my hand because you want some of the patterns you put onto the other side to come through eventually with the soap dish. See that one? That's the bottom. You want some of those patterns to come through. So being really gentle. And then again, bit of slip. And using the outside edges, supporting the underneath, using the outside edges, squish it back together. And that's done. So, Tom, something I have learned to do over when doing like deeper, deeper dishes, that what, often before I take it off, the the uh, the kit. I've certainly I've been doing it with the triangular ones. I've been making up three little balls of clay, and putting them down on on the on the work surface in a triangle shape, yeah. using the same clay. And then when I when I relieve the thing off the the kit, but if I put it onto the three balls, it means that the balls support the underside of it like that. It's yeah, quite, quite useful if you're doing quite deep, deep-sided things. I've found, and the great yeah, thing about yeah. that can dry on there because that'll shrink at the same rate as that. Yeah, so this is quite. This is another way because we've both been doing the same thing, but we've been doing it remotely and just going off and doing our own thing. We've both come up with different ways of doing things. Yeah, yeah. So we both we both notice that when the dish comes out, if you leave it, it'll just sink and go flat. <laughs> so a way I got around that was by trying to just use things I thought people might have. So we've got like some sellotape or masking tape. Nice. And, and we just use that and pick the dish up and plop it into it. And that'll yeah. just hold it. You can just yeah. leave that now and it'll, it'll dry into that, that shape. Do another one. Let's get through the block. And then we can, so again, clean it off. Let's go a bit quicker, tap it down. And it's off. Bit of slip. Clean that together. Get a dish thing. Stick it in. in the wire. Oops, <laughs> my wire broke. 
if your wire breaks, breaks, you'll have to make another one. So this I just use some speaker wire. And they will break eventually, but it's good to learn how to make your own wire. Try different things as well. There. Another one. Okay, so you've got a few of those made. Once we've done that, Tom, I think both of us, we both enjoy the, a little bit of stick work, don't we? So, a bit of stick work. With doing triangular ones or square ones, something that is quite good. If you've got some sticks knocking around, if you, you could use rulers or uh, I guess like there's like kitchen equipment, you could so tools you could use. But yeah, wooden panels like this, quite good. If you look over your your dishes, you can like you can square them up and like and just form them a little bit like that. And what it does, it just straightens up those lines and yeah. it squeezes them in together. It's quite a good way of compressing that seam you've got as well. It's got the slip in it. It's quite a, a tidy way of compressing that seam as well to make sure that you've got a good join. Yeah, let's try that. But make, make sure it's something wooden you're using because something plastic would more than likely stick to the clay. So what it means is you're just getting, because there's something really pleasant, I think, about that lovely, the edge that you get between the two faces, and sharpening it up. You, yeah. You, you've been doing lots of things like polishing it, haven't you, Tom? And, yeah, but that was just too much messing around, really. <laughs> this is better. It's good to be able to do things without too much messing around. I think if you mess around too much, things to get tend to get, well, messy, but also untidy and a little bit kind of ugly. We, we like things in as little moves as possible. Okay? Yes. <laughs> so again, just kind of... And we'll put that in there. And then we'll leave that to dry. And when it's dry, you can handle it more. When it goes like people, re you refer to it, people refer to it as being leather hard. It just means it kind of holds itself and you can touch it without your fingers making marks on the clay. And if you've got, like I've used the balls that Joe makes or just in a, an old circular form, you could use a tea towel kind of rolled up or a cloth that was dry in like a circle form and drop it into the middle of that. Or... I did use some of them, some like just into a bowl, the top of a bowl. So it was just touching the very tops. A good time for anybody out there who um, wants a little bit more on like, on what, you know, on, on the, you mentioned leather hard and uh, it's a state of hydration. A really good, a really good comparison is cheddar cheese. So at the moment we're working the clay in almost like a, I guess like a, a cream cheese state. And if you wait for it to go leather hard, it goes like cheddar and it becomes um, quite workable, doesn't it? Cheddar, I think cheddar is quite a good uh, comparison. Yeah. Yeah, so if you wanted that, that's that's a soap dish. You could let that dry and then have it fired somewhere or fire it yourself. And that is a soap dish. Um, or you can make it into a kind of enclosed dish that would hold a liquid or small things that won't fall through the bottom. So what was your technique for doing that, Joe? So what I did, I waited for them to firm up a little bit. So just, just dry out a little bit. And then I made tiny little balls of clay. So a ball of clay that is just wider than the hole. So you can kind of like do it, make, make a ball of clay, with the same type of clay. And then yeah. I just dropped it into the hole. And then um, with a, uh, actually I was using a, uh, a rolling pin before, the end, at the end of a rolling pin, but I'm gonna use the end of that, that nice, uh, the curve's quite good of that. So I'm just gonna press in really swiftly, like that, just to seal it. And I, I'm, what, I'm not gonna go in and mess around and try and remove the evidence of it being there, because I actually quite like the, um, the fact that you can see that it is actually just a, a ball of clay that's been pressed in, it kind of becomes part of the, can you see? 
Yeah, because if you'd start trying to mess around with that with your finger, trying to smooth it out, you're going to mess with the... Yeah, you, you're going to do more damage than is, You're going to do more damage than is... Um, than you're removing, in a way. Yeah. There might be some interesting ways that people watching this or doing the online course things, they might you might come up with an idea to make it quick, easy, yeah. and attractive. And if they do, there will be a link put out for people to email in their ideas that we can discuss before the next session. That's great. I wonder if there's any way that there would be some sort of implement. I mean, you could just leave it like that. What do, you, what do you mean? It's a bit flower head like. Flower bit in the middle, whatever they call that. I'm just trying to think of something interesting and could quickly squash oh, like into it. You could press in like a seal tom or something. Yeah. Like if you had a. So that, you could make a stamp, your own stamp out of a piece of wood by cutting like slots in the end. Yeah. Could you, could you, use, could you use a wine cork, Tom? Yeah. Be quite good. I've got one handy. Bit of bamboo. So I'm just going to use a bit of bamboo, for mine, and squish it in. What I found that gives there. that gives you that. If you use bamboo, you get an extra kind of yeah that's little what, circle yeah. thing in the middle. It's quite cool. What what I found with these deeper ones, deeper ones, is when, when you do this, you almost get you get into you do two things for the price of one. You're sealing that hole. But in the compressing of it, you're also flattening the base on the underside against the wood, which is quite good. So you're kind of doing two things in one go, which is quite yeah. a good thing. So with that now, once I've sealed out the bottom again, I'm going to just drop it down. You can also, if you're just touching the outsides, you can manipulate as well, kind of squash up to make it more dish-like. You'll obviously, you'll lose some definition from the underside, but maybe that doesn't matter. I'm just manipulating it up a little. You could go quite, just trying to get this up as far as I can go. Nice. All becomes a bit flower-like, <laughs> kind of clammy. And then leave that in its little masking tape holder to dry. So yeah. Quite like them as dishes. What else have we got? I like Tom, these, these kind of dishes. That I, I quite like the, especially the triangle and the square one, that they invite kind of um, party food quite well. Because I like that you could almost, if you had with the with the equilateral triangle ones and the square ones, you could almost you could arrange like patterns on the table with them and then fill them with interesting things couldn't you yeah like so effectively all, all use them like tiles on the table yeah but i'd encourage people to play as well have a go at manipulating it gives you a feel for what is actually going on as long as you don't touch the inside so i'm going a bit far with this one Yeah. You still got some of the definition on the outside, but not a lot. But when it gets leather hard, another thing you can do is actually carve the outside. The thing I did on some, these ones, the edges of this one, the way I did it was leather hard and then just kind of carved the edges because they looked a bit gloopy and rubbish looking so i just carved them just to give it a bit more definition we could do that maybe in one session and then one of the next sessions john of joe when we do some like experiments and things we can show a few more of those processes that'd be good yeah i don't like that one <laughs> okay yeah so that's a good thing to do with the first one that has the flat bottom. So that was the first one. So this was also a first one. 
see the bottom's kind of rough and just to kind of make the edge a bit more interesting just carved it with a knife like normal kitchen knife this is a palette knife but i just kind of went in break off go in break off go in break off but it has to be leather hard to it wouldn't work on these and that's dishes dishes yeah no i mean it would be interesting for people to make the dishes and then have ideas of how they would develop it or maybe marry it to another idea yeah yeah so we had dishes for these oh there's the other thing i'm just going to nip outside joe and get the other thing okay <laughs> I'm, I'm going to talk about these edges a bit so um something these edges you can do um lots of interesting things with so you can't see very well on these ones and i haven't got an example here but these are these are just dry clay at the moment but i've actually painted a blue slip on the edge of these there and there so when when these fire this will be all white and white on the underside, but that edge will be highlighted by the blue slip that I put on. You really can't see it now. Um, so there are nice things you can do to kind of really highlight some of the detail that's going on. Yeah. Just in, just so back again. It's all, about, good. it's all about playing and just enjoying it, really. Yeah. But it'd be good for people to think of ways to develop them into other objects and other products. So yeah. while we were doing this, we kind of thought of like some other ways of doing it. And this, we came up with the idea of making like a simple bird feeder using two of these soap dishes. Because a soap dish is quite niche. It'd be quite good to have quite a few different uses with like just a small alteration. So normally you'd use a piece of string. We've got the two soap dishes there works good with circular ones because they kind of stack on top of each other i'm just going to feed a piece of string if you had a bit of string use a bit of string and put a, a kind of knot under it and then feed another one on top what i did was put like bird seed in it and then just hang that outside in a tree it looks quite cool yeah kind of like this that. weird kind of monster thing in the tree Quite good. We have quite a few of them. So it did that. And here, been, here's the one. been taking it, Tom. Yeah, look. So this is the one I put in. This was just biscuit fired. One of the first ones we did. So you can see inside there where the birds have been eating. Oh, nice. I'm gonna, <laughs> a fat ball. I'm going to have a go with these. Tom, do you think that that these square ones should work okay? Shouldn't they look? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. And you could you could also do it with maybe like a piece of bamboo maybe if you got the hole the right size you could like mount them on the floor or on a balcony or something like that doesn't have to be hung from a tree if you haven't got a tree yeah yeah but what's interesting about these ones is that um they're kind of bird specific we have a lot of sparrows here but the sparrows can't handle it they can't get their heads around it they like come onto it and then they just kind of fall off so which and, birds do you go for it, Tom? Uh, small like cold tits, blue tits, they love it because they can they can grab on like upside down. They're really agile and they don't weigh anything. So yeah. it's kind of quite good for the smaller, prettier birds. Robins like it as well, but they just kind of cling on for like about 10 seconds and make it spin round. They like sit on it and it spins round. They have a good like feed and then they fly off really quickly. So yeah, other uses for things. Be quite good. I mean, this is good because if water is most of the water is kept off the bird seed by the top dish, and if any water does get into the bottom, it kind of drains through the bottom draining hole, so the bird seed stays not perfectly dry but dry enough. So that's quite good. Took them about a week to get used to it, though. I think they're a bit freaked out by it. <laughs> so another one we did with this is. Um, it's a bit weird looking this, but um, you, can, you could use them as a single, as a simple kind of candle holder. So you have your candle in a soap dish like you just need to apply it to a bit of water. You could use it on its own. Um, but what we did with this, we put one of the tiles we made last time behind it. And then the candle sits there in the dish. So any, any wax is caught in that dish, but it, it flickers and gives really good patterns with the, um, it's like a sconce, I suppose. And it kind of reflects the light out. So that's quite a cool thing. Yeah, I like that.
we've got quite a lot of other products in the, in the, in the, in the pipeline, haven't we, Tom, which I think we're going to talk about, um, I guess, as the sessions move on. In the last session, we're going to do a real um, exploration, aren't we? And talk through yeah. lots of different bits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I encourage people to, again, to um, get in touch with us. There'll be email links put out with these yeah. courses and throughout the course, people should uh, get in touch and let us know their problems or ideas they're enjoying yeah. or new ways of making things. It's all very, it works, it's good for us and it's kind of how the whole public house project works. That's why we're doing it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So um, thanks everybody. We'll see you next session. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Cheers, Tom. See you soon. <laughs> See ya. No Hector this time. No Hector this time, no. Um, yeah, maybe I can encourage him. If he wants him to, he never will. But then, uh, <laughs> yeah.